What is up, JL Life? Modo here. Today's video I'm really excited for. A lot of people have been asking why I don't like this bumper. And I'm going to be telling you why and switching it out with something better. Y'all, stay tuned. So first thing, I want to talk about why I got this bumper to begin with. Why I got the DV8 bumper. Well, back when I bought the JL, it was June 2018. I went rock crawling out with someone I had just met. His name was Chris. Uh, he, he's a great guy. He has taught me a lot, but he got me to do an obstacle. And I sustained body damage. Now, Come on, you can do this. Just so you don't scratch. Slow, slow. Oh, crunch. No! It's fine. I had about 300 miles on it. Damage didn't look that bad with the plastic bumper on it. it. Looked mostly like it was just scuffed up and some clips popped out, but you took the bumper off and boom. Damage. No modifications done to it. I had the plastic bumpers, and the way the plastic bumpers work, it's just always makes me scratch my head here's the body of the jeep and you have a bracket sticking out underneath the body of the jeep so when i had come down off an obstacle it went up went into the quarter panel right here went into the quarter panel up here crunched it all up not gonna lie it was the first time i took body damage on a vehicle and it was a very expensive vehicle it was i acted like it didn't bother me but now it's, it's fine so after sustaining that damage, I went and bought steel bumpers. I bought the barricade one for the front, and I bought the DV8 for the rear. The reason I went with the DV8 was DV8 was the only one that I was able to find bumpers for. And this was before I kind of knew where to look for Jeep parts. Um, I believe I bought them through Quadratech, and then I only knew of the like the big major companies. But anyways, no one was making rear steel bumpers, and I wasn't wanting the Mopar one because it was. I heard there was problems with that one as well, and it's overpriced. It's Mopar. And so I landed on this bumper, and at first I was happy with it. It seemed like it offered a lot of protection. It, I'd hit it a couple times. It seemed like it was fine. However, I did start to notice issues I was having. As you look around my bumper, you'll see there's a, a ripply texture, and you'll start to notice things like chipping from it. And the thing is, you know, where I hit, that's not a big deal. I would expect it to chip off. But, like, right here, right here. I mean, you can just chip it off. And the D-rings, I mean, it's just, it flakes, flakes off way too easy. And the thing is, it doesn't even need to be hit. And it's just... It's like a, my bumper's like a leper and its skin's falling off. So I actually contacted DV8 when this was happening and I, I was like, is this normal? Is this supposed to be happening? They told me it wasn't, but they refused to send me a new bumper saying, well, what we will do is we'll send you a crash kid to say sorry, or we'll send you one of those mounting brackets for the, the 50 inch LED bars for the top of your, I, I, I don't like that look. So I turned that one down. I took the crash kid. I got it. It was really, it was very big. It was very over branded, which you can brand your stuff. I'm okay with that. But when like the whole thing just says deviate cut out in it, it's like, stop. Didn't like it. So when I got it, I actually just gave it away. I continue to run this bumper and more problems ensued. So the next problem I ran into is how it mounts. Now you can see how they are very large ovals that the bolts go into. Well, it wasn't a problem at first, but as I started to do more intense things, harder things, uh, what started to happen. For this demonstration, I did loosen the bolts just so I can show you by hand. But what would happen, ow, finger. But what would happen, I would come down on a rock. It would flex right into the tub. And you can see all the damage that's happened. And of course, the other side is the same story. Now that, I, I I contribute to poor research and development. 
by DV8. I mean, there's there's just no way around that. So let, let me just kind of play devil's advocate. And you're like, oh, we do that for a purpose to where it gives you flex in your bumper. Okay, I'll buy that even though it's not needed. But why the hell could you not cut a little bit more out so when it did flex, it wouldn't hit? And another thing about this bumper uh, that I liked, it did have the pod lights in the bumper to kind of help illuminate when you're reversing. I like that, but there's a problem with having giant pods in your bumper. It makes your bumper way too thick. Why is that an issue? So the reason having a really big bumper is not beneficial is because you're going to hit it a lot more. Now, my first thought was it's a bumper. It's supposed to take hits. That's what it's designed to do. Well, yes, it is supposed to take hits, but you want to minimize the hits as much as possible. One, it's going to prolong the life of your bumper. That's good enough reason to be avoiding this. So you want something strong. You want something thin. And I get it. The reason why this bumper is so big downwards is because of those light pods and just idea here instead of using giant pod lights inside the bumper you could have used some sort of flat floodlight led uh that would have worked just fine but they just rushed it out i guess i don't know and so it turns out that i'm not the only one who has problem with dv8 when i had first gotten my jeep i thought dv8 was a decent brand it comes to find out the more i see people installing things from dv8 people need to modify things to get it to fit they need to alter things from dv8 from the from their factory to get it to fit i can't support something like that so i've been wanting to get rid of this bumper for a while and i've just been waiting for something to replace it so i'm replacing it with the cav fab mid-length bumper it is 3 16th american steel includes heavy extreme bolt-in tie-ins to the frame and includes all new grade 8 hardware and of course there's no drilling or cutting required for this it has a cutout for the hitch and it is designed for extreme departure angles. And for the coating, I wrapped your lined it. Link above if you're curious how that's done. So with this video, I don't intend on showing you guys how to install a rear bumper. It's pretty straightforward and simple. just to kind of show some numbers here so roughly about seven inches out cafab is less than four inches but three and a half out and of course that's going to translate to it being tucked closer to the jeep less likely to hit it I'm going from the bottom to the top 10 inches cafab is eight that's not even to the furthest out point because that sucks back in technically it would be five because it starts cutting at that point so after you consider the size of course thinner is better not well, not so much thinner as tighter to the jeep is better and the reason being it gives you more clearance you hit less rocks when you're out doing off-road fun stuff and your bumper will look better longer uh, another thing to be paying attention to is weight now, the CAFAB bumper weighs 39 pounds, what is, we'll say to say 40, weighs about 40 pounds. This one weighs about 75 pounds, and that's a huge difference. You want something tight, you want something well built, you want something that's going to provide maximum departure angle clearance. Whether you want to get something that's pre-powder coated or not, it's really up to you. I really like the look of the Raptor lining. And it's super easy, super cheap, which is why I, I did it again for this bumper. Another issue I forgot to talk about is when I would come down off of a rock, my bumper would flex up. It would actually prevent my tailgate from opening unless I loosened the bolts and readjusted it. Now, the issue with that is that's where I keep all my tools. Because I actually have the Tuffy trunk, which I, I can't reach into the back of my Jeep. I have to open the tailgate. And there's been situations where I couldn't get into the trunk of my Jeep because... My tools are back there, and I can't loosen it until I go and borrow someone else's tools. So anyways, I'm going to get this new bumper on. I'm not going to really show you how to do it, except for 
one thing that I really like about this bumper. Uh, of course, it comes with new hardware, but I'll get to showing you that when I'm there. Real quick, I wanna talk about this backing plate. It's another piece that's included with the bumper. It's gonna help secure the bumper to where it's not going to move. Nothing fancy about it, it's just a plate with some nuts welded on it. But inside your frame on passenger side, you have these holes on the bottom and nothing to hold it in. Well, this is just gonna sit right there and we're gonna be able to bolt it in on the bottom. Driver's side already has nuts kind of put in. So. so anyways, this should go right in here and we should be able to bolt in from the bottom to kind of help to hold it all together. That's it. That's really good. You can see how much thinner it is. How much higher it is. Install, super easy. You got those two bolts. These two, and the exact same on the other side. I should not have to worry about this. I'm eventually gonna do something about that. So guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope this kind of clarifies into the whole cheap bumper, expensive bumper, and that's not even the case. I spent close to 600 bucks on my DV8 bumper. That one's 400 bucks. I hate wasting money. This video is in no way, shape, or form to discourage you from purchasing DV8. If you guys want to purchase DV8, it's your money. Do what you want with it. And on that same note, this video is not to tell you to go buy CatFab. However, I strongly recommend CatFab. They are a superior design product. I've not gotten anything from CatFab. I haven't liked DV8 on the other hand. Eh. DV8's mounting was a lot stronger than we wouldn't have had this issue. All the bad things that could have happened in the event that I needed to have a significant recovery from the rear end on my Jeep. Just remember, play is never a good thing. It's always going to lead to more problems. So the DV8 bumper uh, is going to the graveyard. The bumper graveyard that me and Misty have. Another one that we had issues with was Iron Cross. Uh, Misty got this one for her Jeep originally, and we got this one because it was actually the cheapest in its range. It had a tire carrier and the bumper, I believe for $900 for the pair. Now, the issues that we started having is it, it would flex. It was rubbing into the tub nowhere near as bad as the DV8, but it would get stuck, and we weren't able to open Misty's trunk very easily. And it's because those giant damn holes and no other mounting locations for it note to manufacturers if this is going to be what's holding your bumper to the jeep you better make this have a lot less tolerance than this remember to like comment subscribe and share because this is the way y'all keep it easy Okay, you're starting to come down on the path. You're going to start coming down passenger. Dang. You're not even on the ground yet. Careful. <laughs> it's pretty steep.
right, you're about to come down. Okay, first, okay. So that side's already halfway down. Don't mess up your bumper. Okay, you're looking all right. You're gonna, probably gonna clear it. Oh, we got a little bit of hitch touch, but. There it goes. A little bit of bumper taps. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. You're on a little ledge. Yeah. It's gonna drop. Oof. It's a good thing you deflate your tire. Yeah. Broke in the bumper. All right. And guess what it didn't do? Flex into the tub.